The story of the Jeep began prior to World War II. The United States understood that at some point we were going to be involved in, in some aspect. So they put out a contractor, a bid for a four-wheel all-terrain reconnaissance vehicle. And a little company called Bantam in Butler, Pennsylvania actually won the design contest. The problem with Bantam is they only had about 13 employees, so there was no way that they could ramp up fast enough to create enough of these vehicles. But they did create something called the, uh, the um, Bantam Reconnaissance Vehicle 40. And they sold a few to the government on a test basis, but the government quickly realizing that it wasn't going to work, they awarded the contract itself to build a vehicle to Willie's Overland, and thus the Jeep began. Um, Ford subcontracted. Roughly about one third of all of the World War II Jeeps made were actually made by Ford. A lot of people don't know that. So if we step over here, this is a typical World War II Willys vehicle. It, it's uh, designated an MB, Military Model B. They had the prototype, which was an MA. So I, as you can see, it's, it's quite simple, but for the period of time, it was revolutionary because it's four-wheel drive. It is almost like a Swiss Army knife of vehicles. You can do a number of things with it. It can carry out a number of roles. It's lightweight, it's transportable, it's air droppable. And as you can see, this one is outfitted with a 30 caliber Browning machine gun. Um, that was the most common configuration for the few Jeeps that actually had guns. Now, some of the design things in here that were unique to a military vehicle is you have what is called a blackout drive system in that you could drive this vehicle with a small amount of light that would allow you to uh, negotiate terrain, but there wasn't enough light for aircraft to see it and give away the position of a convoy or individual vehicles. This is the blackout headlight. These are the blackout marker lights. Uh, a little innovation here that I thought was quite clever are the headlights themselves. They're not only shielded back, which allows for uh, harder to see from the air, but if you undo this little wing nut, the headlights will actually turn back on themselves so you can see the engine compartment in the dark and work on it in the dark, which is, in my mind, real clever. Now, as World War II wound down, they, they made another version of this, uh, which was the uh, M38, it was also called the MC, which had minor changes to this. We don't have one of these here on display today. But in the 1950s, they came up with a whole new design program and platform, which became the M38A1 or the MC. This is an M38A1. The, uh, the, the electrical system went from a six volt to a 24 volt to power radios and other types of equipment. It still possesses the same design of blackout drive system and it's operated the same way. It's basically just an upgraded version of the earlier World War II Jeep with stronger differentials and a, a, a stronger motor. It went from the L-head or flathead motor to the F-head motor, which has one valve. It has one valve in the head, one valve in the block. It's kind of a unique engine in and of itself. It's completely unique to any Jeep. It has four-wheel independent suspension. The front and rear differentials are interchangeable, so you have f fewer parts to maintain on your PLL system. And it also has a fold-down windshield like all the, the previous Jeeps. And the few that were mounted with guns had an M60 30 caliber machine gun. They had three versions of this particular Jeep, the M151 being the first, and they had a, a very big rollover problem because of the configuration of the A-frames front and rear. So they made an M151A1 that slightly modified that, but it still had a potential to roll over when mistreated. Uh, most of the rollovers were due to young soldiers with a I don't care attitude and 
they drove them beyond the limits of the vehicle. Um, later on, they went to this version, which is the M151A2, which has a redesigned rear suspension that is less prone to rollovers and much safer. And this is the last of the Jeeps, even though it isn't technically a Jeep. And one of the unusual things, let's go to the front here. If you notice the grill, the grill has horizontal slats as opposed to the vertical slats of all the earlier designs. And that is because Willys trademarked that design of grill. So when Ford made their design, they had to do something different, which is a little bit of vehicle trivia. The replacement for this particular Jeep is the Humvee, which you see over here in the back. The Humvee has been around since roughly 1986, and they're still in use today. The Humvee came with a, a 6.2 diesel engine, an automatic transmission. Uh, once again, it has four-wheel independent suspension. But to get higher ground clearance, they came up with an innovation called the geared hub. Now, what that does is it puts the axle higher up and it, it allows uh, more suspension travel and it allows for more ground clearance. And so how did you, when did you start kind of collecting all these? When I was still on active duty in the military, I, I, I started collecting them. I was buying them from the, they call it DRMO, Defense Re Reutilization and Management Office. And, um, at that point, the M151 ones were being phased out, and we used to have to cut them in half to get them out of the, out of the military control, and we'd take them back to the shop, Fix weld them up, and that's a lot of the M151 ones that you see were actually welded back together. I was in the Army from 1968 to 1989. Oh, okay. I actually retired New Year's Eve, and it was a hell of a party. You're basically sitting on a bomb that's crazy so when when did they change that in the late 50s the first cj5 was 1955. how's that for a soft top Yeah, these, these came out of the sea rations. You used to get a pack in every sea ration box. And this, well, this was known as the death card. There were certain units, when they, they left the battlefield, they would throw these down on dead enemy soldiers as kind of an intimidation factor. Mm -hmm. if they had been, in order to get them out of the property disposal office, you had to cut them somewhere. And this one was actually two pieces. It was cut right here underneath the seats. The battery, I, I took the batteries out and I took this gas tank out and I cut it where the, any of my rewelds wouldn't be noticeable. And here it is. I actually have a picture of it when I got it. <laughs> So that this is that's, that's crazy. This vehicle. And that's the front half of it. Before. After. That's badass.